So this is Amar Jyot Singh. I'm talking to what's your name? I'm Ishrita. Ishrita. Okay, and you are in somewhere in Toronto, I think. Yes. Acha. That's okay. Have problem legal issue. What is what is going on so that I can give you my legal counsel? Ah, uh, we got a, a rejection letter for inadmissible ah uh, on seventeenth of April. Hmm. Seventeenth um, April. Okay. Uh, by saying that this uh, you, you are not in legal relationship it's not true you are not in legal relationship it's not true okay so let me let me just uh, uh, understand yeah, a, a yeah. few few things about your background how how uh, how many how much long what is the length of your marriage how many months have you been married it's been 3 years and i we we used to stay together we know each other before okay So your husband was interviewed. Yes. Uh, one time or two times. No. Ah, uh, he he was a student in here, and then uh, there are lawyer, there are legal activities lawyer. I mean, they're not lawyer. They usually sit, and there was that was the guy who helped us out, and he applied his visa. Ah, uh, when his dates were out. I mean, even after expiring his visa, thirty days out, uh, that was the time, and he said he was out for vacation, and he applied it. So we waited until October, and we got his rejection, first rejection in October. And then after okay. that, we wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second. So your husband was already in Canada on what visa? Student visa. Student visa, and you got married in Canada. Yes. Okay, so you said that somebody applied for his uh, open work permit after after your husband's status did expire. Yes. Is that what you said? How much time after the status expired that you applied for the uh, spouse visa? Uh, in October we got rejection letter after his. No, no, no. You you don't understand my question. जब the husband the परमिट एक्सपायर हो गया ओदे किन्ने दिन बाद तुसी स्पाउस वीजा एप्लीकेशन लॉन्च कीती है हस्बैंड दी मे बी ईयर और सो आफ्टर 1 ईयर हां जी ओके सो सो जस्ट टू जस्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस करेक्टली सो आफ्टर 1 ईयर ऑफ बीइंग ओवर एक्सपायर्ड ऑन द स्टेटस ही फाइल्ड समबडी फाइल्ड द स्पाउस वीजा फॉर द हस्बैंड एंड यस एंड दिस स्पाउस वीजा वाज फाइल्ड ऑनलाइन Yes, online and that too out of country. I mean, he is in this country, and they applied out of country. Okay, this is this is a serious legal uh, uh, mistake. I think it's a misstep. Why why did somebody apply? Just just to be very very simple here, uh, both husband and wife are in Canada. The wife is in 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 a legal student visa valid status, which is you. and the husband has expired his status somebody applied for his open work permit outside canada why would he do that i did ask them that and they are like no this is how it will go cause the time they asked me to uh, sign the form i read it I, and i read it that it says out of canada and i did ask them but they are like no this is how it gonna get applied uh, i have to stop you right right there so that we can do some legal analysis of the situation here uh your study permit status is valid now ongoing i think uh i have my pnp with me and i have applied federal file okay okay wait 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 what we we'll, we'll go we'll go that a little later but right now you are legal you have your status yes. is not under any question So here's here's the problem with this approach. Uh, whoever this immigration lawyer or legal consultant is, they have failed to recognize one serious flaw in this analysis, which is if the person is already undocumented or expired on his status, if at all the application is submitted outside, which is did, what mm-hmm. happens? What happens if? First of all, it will be it will be looked at some visa officer sitting outside Canada, maybe New Delhi or somewhere else, maybe mm-hmm. in New York also. Uh, if they decide that they have to issue you the visa, then they will have to request the passport. There is no way you can send the passport from the husband who is in Canada to outside outside Canada location. So that's a problem number one. Problem number two is 
what happens if there is a need of examination like an interview then how will the husband actually leave canada in a over expired status to travel abroad and then take an interview because if the visa is not granted then he cannot come back for these two reasons i think it is a serious legal mistake of applying this outside unless the husband leaves canada this application should not have been applied from overseas so so this is something to understand that if the husband had left voluntarily uh, and went home went to india and they could have applied from there as a regular applicant then it would have been no problem but this is a i think is a legal misstep anyway so when they when the application was made he was called for an interview uh no not for this one uh for for the one right now it's the fourth time we applied and now right now he's in okay, india okay wait wait a second we have to go step one by one so this application was the first application that this was applied and this was refused the first application that was applied that we were talking about that was already already refused without the interview yes, that was a, okay so tell yes. tell me about the second application now and then said uh, i changed my lawyer someone said me okay go with them and they suggested me that they, they're going to apply trv they will they therapy. will apply what trv trv so trp will not be granted in this case at all anyway what happened to the trp application waited for a few months for then we waited for a few months for that and then we got rejected again and i'm not i'm not I'm not, time, i'm not surprised the trp has to be rejected trp is the trp approval rate is less than 2% or 2.5% out of 100 applications less than 3 applications will get trp and this is not the situation this is not those uh, extenuating circumstances which would allow uh, assurance of a trp so anyway what happened to the trp refusal letter then um then they suggested us to ask him to go to india leave canada and then we can apply dependent spouse work permit from there and then okay. for the yeah okay so that rejected so, so he left so he left canada he went to india and then the the third application was made yes okay so and it was fourth it was no so the first application what you already described me the second was trp the third application was done when he left canada to go to india that's the third application i think uh the first step application was for his student permit when okay, we okay now we are we're not talking we, i'm not i'm not concerned about the student permit so that's okay also, i think you you combine the student yeah, permit also correct. so anyway so this was the last application so he went to india and then he was possibly called for an interview and yeah. what happened in an interview Two hundred copy of our uh, proofs that they have asked us our photos, our chat, or the time we spent together, the our our marriage photographs or anything. And what I did is, and uh, it was my cousin's wedding, so I went to India, and I made files. We both sat at night and we made files, and we made approximately hundred pages. And. how it going to be so we just went we both for sure cause we were like oh we know each other more than 5 years uh and it's been 3 years we am and i'm listening keep keep going i think you are breaking up your data is breaking up i'm sorry keep going go ahead uh over i mean there were dates so he said 29 to 31st and i said 29 to 1st they they picked that thing up and then the other thing they said this marriage is done to get status back yeah well here's here's uh, here's the problem uh you know in the interview they always have to confirm whatever is written on the application form and whatever testimony is given by the applicant if there is a mismatch then uh they will likely they will likely ask you to clarify or they will put a, a misrepresentation that means you are trying to deceive by giving wrong information i'm looking at some i'm looking at some information on your 
on the on the letter that you are showing. Let me just show you on the screen if I can. Give me a few seconds. Let's see if I can. So don't don't shake your uh, mobile phone because otherwise the data will disconnect. Uh, can you see those? Uh, can you see this uh, on the on the screen? Can you see some information on the screen? Yes, sir. I I can. Okay. So uh, look at what what are the discrepancies that they have noted right on the top. Uh, limited evidence of time spent together, of course, after the marriage. Limited evidence of communication between uh, you both since you returned to India after you know uh, November 2019. Contradictory information has been provided by you as invited where you started living. So there, there, this is this is a discrepancy number one. I think your your statement and her statement did not possibly match. That's why this is serious. Uh, you told me that you had stayed at a parent's house for one night, whereas according to information provided and invited, you did not spend at a parent's house. Do, do you see that? This is very serious mistakes here. This is, I mean, in a in a genuine marriage, husband and wife know uh, each other quite well, and you don't forget that how many days you stayed at certain place. I mean, in this case, I think, you, do you see the mismatch? This is serious. The next one is, the ring ceremony had been planned for February to publicize the marriage, whereas the inviter made no mention of this. How how is that possible? Uh, he he told the uh, uh, interviewer that it was a surprise for me, and uh, it was a no. surprise for me. No, 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 no. There's no surprise. There's no surprise here. They they don't see it like that way. Uh, the inviter told me the wife, uh, that is you, uh, you must have told him that uh, that uh, he and his relatives were invited to dinner party in January, where, whereas you did not mention. I mean, how this is quite uh, uh, you know a substantial mm -hmm. event as to not to remember who's invited to dinner party or not. I mean, so you know there are, there are a lot of information here. Look at this. The the last one is contradictory information provided by you and invited indicates that your answer were made up. Do you see that last line? Yes. Yeah. So you know. They give you 15 days, of course, as you all they always do. After 15 days, if they are not satisfied, they will uh, say, sorry, you know, brother, I'm not satisfied. And I, I did not show the full name of your husband on the screen, but you know, at the end of the day, they were not satisfied that you truthfully ask, uh, answered these questions. And they put a section 40 misrepresentation, which is for five years, uh, you know, blacklisting. So what what I what I'm about to say to you is this, look, this has been done recently. I, think, uh, I didn't show the date on the screen, but uh, when was the date? Uh, when did it? Uh, uh, when when was this issue? Uh, on seventeenth of April, and oh, I received that oh, twenty. Oh, just about April. four days. Just just about yeah. just about four days from now. Look, I can yeah. tell you, Shrada, I have I have sympathy uh, with your situation and with your sorrow and trouble, and you know I I'm, you know it just. Um, uh, it, it's it is it's a strategy that this has happened. Right now, you have no other uh, way to to fight this to the visa officer in in India. The only thing that you can do is if you think that you have been wrong, or if you don't uh, believe that you did anything, you know, contrary to the information, then you got to go to the federal court in Canada. If you're in Toronto, you can look up the federal court in uh, in Canada, uh, in, um, uh, in in Toronto. And then uh, file for a judicial review and ask the judge to review this uh, and and challenge this. That's all you can do right now. You have no other no other way. Do you understand? Hello, so, are you? Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's all. I, that's all I can say. That you know, this is this is the only thing that you can do right now. Okay, so can you help me out, sir, or do I need to look for someone else? Uh, I've uh, two things. I am not in Toronto. I live in in Edmonton. I am quite far from okay. you, so that's that's okay. point number one. Point number two is that I am registered with ICCRC as a licensed consultant by ICCRC. So the ICCRC license does not allow people to go represent in federal court of Canada. So you have two okay. choices. Number one, you must look for a lawyer who is registered with, um, not registered actually, he's, he's a member of L, uh, Law Society of Upper Canada based in, based in Ontario. 
So somebody mm -hmm. who's close to you, somebody whom you can trust, and they can take okay. this case, uh, take take this case uh, to the to the federal court. And you have uh, 30 days to to do yeah. this. You have 30 days, so time is running out. So I do not know if they, if they are still open. It is very possible that they, because of coronavirus, they they may have had reduced working hours. But you got to the 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 earliest. What you can do is tomorrow. Uh, just go to the Federal Court of Canada website, look up their phone number, call them, give them a call and ask them, are they open and you need to file a judicial review immediately. Um, most lawyers, uh, just, just to be clear, you know, most lawyers do not uh, do judicial review for immigration, even though they are authorized to. But every lawyer, let's, let's back up a little bit. Every lawyer is not a specialist in immigration law, just to be clear. Among all the lawyers who do immigration law, not all of them are experienced enough in JR in immigration. So that there's a little filtering. So you need to ask some tough questions to the lawyer first, whether they actually are experienced and they would like to defend you in this case. And if they say yes, then you need to also ask them how many similar uh, misrepresentation challenges they have had uh, in the previous uh, at least six months or, you know, at, you know, at least six months. So that way you'll come to know whether they have uh, enough uh, understanding about those immigration matter regarding misrepresentation so that, you know, it's well worth your time. Uh, many lawyers charge anywhere, you know, all depends on how big their office and practice is. Uh, they will charge anywhere from, you know, 5000 to 7000 up to $10,000 for this. And uh, I must I must warn you that the judicial review, uh, you you have to first file a leave petition. That means the court must first agree to take this case. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not, and they can deny you right there. And if if okay. they if they do the the approval rate for misrepresentation in immigration cases is very small. I I don't have the stats, but I would say at least uh, no no more than like one out of fifty or something. You know, okay. so let's say one out of 50 cases will be overturned. The judge can only decide that, you know, proper procedure was not followed in the in the case. And they can ask the uh, the visa officer to have this redetermined by a different officer. That's all they can do. And you, and you hope that he agrees with your logic. So that's that's yeah. all it is. But just to save money and time, uh, if you are in Toronto, you can file the leave petition on your own. Uh, I don't know how much does it cost. It, it is not more than $100, $150. So that means you can go to the federal court yourself if they are mm -hmm. open and ask them uh, that you don't have a lawyer. As a self-petitioner, can you file uh, a leave petition on your own? And you know okay. the, the cost is listed on the website, which is, I think, around $100. $150, not more than that. And you can file the petition. That way, that way you will not miss out on time. And, okay. and, and, you know, once the petition is under process, and so they will let you know, they will ask you to submit all the documents, refuse the letter and other, other things, and then they will decide. Once they decide that the court will take the leave petition, uh, then you can choose any lawyer to, you know, to, uh, you know, to proceed with your arguments. Okay. okay. And another question I have is uh, someone from these lawyers, as I'm contacting everyone I can, uh, they sent me that MP can help us out. I mean, they, I don't know how we gonna. I, here, here's my, here's my, here's my take on this. Any lawyer who is told you that MP can help you, uh, they are not worth a second visit. Oh, okay. okay. Any lawyer who's telling you they they this this statement itself is telling me that they are not well experienced in immigration matters of judicial review, especially misrepresentation. Right now, a member of parliament is powerless. Member of parliament has no interfering or no influencing power on this matter right now. The only person, the only authority. At this point of time, in this case, is a federal judge. That's it. No, no member of parliament. No, not even minister of immigration. Not even prime minister. Not even nobody. Only the federal court judge 
if if the judge decides that there was some uh, deficiency in the legal process, how it was done, and other things, uh, only only he has the power. He or she has the power to to overturn this decision and and refer this case to be redetermined by a different officer. That's all. Can you hear me? Uh, the file we have applied for federal. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's my that's that's my response to that thing. So uh, uh, e either way, you have a, a tough road ahead. You have to uh, do this on your own, unfortunately, and then uh, hope to find a passionate and enthusiastic lawyer who understands misrepresentation clauses in immigration. As I said earlier. Uh, there are thousands of uh, lawyers all over Canada. Most lawyers make money through miscellaneous applications like real estate, bankruptcy, and corporate law, and insurance law, and contracts, and other things, uh, including immigration. But not all of them, you have to understand this, not all of them are specialists in immigration. In, in uh, Ontario, if you, if you uh, went to the Law Society of Upper Canada website, you can filter and search all the lawyers who are certified in immigration law. Uh, and then that way you will know that these people have undergone a specialist courses or they have chosen to uh, be, you know, categorized in a certain specialty. At least you have a better way of filtering and reaching the, the, the right lawyer for you. And out of people who are specialist in immigration lawyers, and then now you have to do a search on who is specialist in defending misrepresentation cases because some lawyers can do you know appeal at the immigration appeal division sponsorship application uh, maybe at the border and maybe refugee application then humanitarian compassionate but defending a misrepresentation application as a gr is a totally different ball game and then you would you need somebody who has experience in doing this, otherwise you will waste your time and money. Okay, sir. Okay. And sir, what about the file we have applied for federal and all? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I can answer. I can answer. Say that again. Hello? You're breaking up. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot understand this. I'm asking. What about the file I have applied for federal now? What about your file? There's some problem in your connection. Uh, I cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, what did you What did you say? What about what file? I have applied. I I cannot understand you. You have to repeat the question. My federal file, so I have applied for for federal. Oh, so it has it has no effect on your personal file. This this application, this uh, problem, this refusal for your husband has no effect on your own personal immigration in Canada. It has no effect. Oh, we had his name on it. Huh? We had his name on it. Well, that's fine. That's fine. So he will be excluded. So his eligibility will be excluded on it for five years. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Unfortunately, Thank that's you. it. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.